Good morning, everyone. Okay, okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Ready? Good morning, everyone. Okay, a little bit better. I promise after this, we will feed you. I'm the last presenter, and we'll do this a little bit quickly. I wanna, um, I'm very excited to be here at Science in the Age of Experience among great scientists and scientific leaders. Um, we all work in the business of having our customers have happier, healthier, and easier lifestyles by using science. So if we're having healthier lifestyles, I wanna talk for a minute about your personal health. So how many of you have seen a doctor in the last year? How many of you have seen a doctor in the last six months? Okay, when you saw that doctor, how did they know that you were healthy? Or not healthy? I mean, they take a bunch of assessments, right? And then they compare it to what's normal. So they take assessments and then they compare it to what a baseline is. So based on years of research, we know if you're healthy or not based on benchmarking, right? We benchmark to a normal population. And then a lot of times, what else does your doctor say to you? Come see me back again in a year or in six months. Why? Because we're focusing on prevention now. Does anybody have Kaiser Permanente in their area? Prevention, let's thrive, right? That's their big uh, slogan. So we know that prevention is gonna reduce cost, um, better at doing frequent assessments to know where you fit within your benchmarking as opposed to doing one assessment every five or six years and then finding a big health problem. Well, the same thing happens in our business. Right, so I wanna talk about scientific business health for a minute. Because the same as our normal health, it's better to do frequent benchmarking and coming in so that you're focusing on prevention and you're doing frequent indicators or assessments. But in the business world, we call these KPIs, right? It's not a biomarker, it's a KPI. But a lot of times we don't do this. So why don't we do this in our business health but we do it in our personal health? Well, KPIs are actually really complex things to document. Why? Because they're usually latent traits in our business. Latent traits means I can't take a ruler and measure it. It's got error in it. It's more complex to measure. We lack comparison data a lot of times. Who do we compare ourselves as a company against? Outside of financial comparisons, right? Financial comparisons on growth and profitability, yes, but scientifically based comparisons about our business. We lack that ability to compare. It's also very time consuming. Um, I have a background in statistics specializing in measurement theory. I know, that's super awesome and exciting. However, there's a lot of things about measurement and measurement theory that you need to know to create surveys, right? Surveys is not just everything you can think of and we put it on a piece of paper. There's a lot of science, data science, that goes into the back end of those measurements. And we need to account for those. Um, also, overall, there's a fear, right? When we go to the doctor, my husband, for example, does not like to go to the doctor. Why? Because they're gonna tell him to stop doing something that he probably enjoys doing, like eating too much ice cream or drinking too much Coke. That would be his problems there. For a fear for our business, what is gonna come out of this assessment and what is it gonna say about our business? But it actually is an area to improve, right? If you have the knowledge, you can improve it. So some of you, like Jim Fry, who's Six Sigma, right? I'm very familiar with Six Sigma process improvement areas. Um, being in statistics and industry statistician, we use these all the time. So many tools are out there for assessing process improvement. However, when you're assessing business improvement, there's some adjustments that should be made, right? Many times it's defined, you measure, you analyze, you make a change, you monitor, and then you control. Right, and so I'd like to talk about some changes to that process in terms of our business health. So there's the phrase, what's measured improves. I kind of agree with this. <laughs> I'll talk about that in, in a bit. But there's some details on how we measure so that we're making sure we're optimizing our business improvements. So with that, 
We want to talk about in the define. When you're defining what your KPI should be, what you should focus on, you need to take a set scope, but it also needs it to be a top-down scope. And what typically happens with Six Sigma projects for green belts or other areas, it's, it's a very focused area at one site with one smaller problem. Typically, the newest intern gets assigned to it, right? I know that because I was that intern back in the day that got assigned to that. And you don't have that top-down view of what is the leadership within the company thinking about this? What's important to them? Because their objectives are a little bit different than the objectives of the scientist or of the data scientist. So we need to think about that in a top-down view and then focus on an area or a scope. Within life sciences, as we've heard, and within um, other areas of science, like from ExxonMobil, upstream areas are very different than downstream areas, and sometimes they function as different businesses. So finding the area that you want to improve on, defining the scope very well, not to be too big or too small, and making sure that you understand the objectives of everybody involved from top to down within that area. So measure and analyze. I could do all talks on stats and stats techniques to measure and analyze, right? But the key here is we need to benchmark. If you do an analysis and there's no data to compare it to, pre, post, or anywhere else, we're probably missing a lot of information. In the area of measurement, you don't just want one measurement in time series. You don't just want two. You want three or more. So if you don't have three measurement areas, your reliabilities of your measurements are really reduced. The other thing to think about in measurement is measurement error, right? We're measuring things in manufacturing off of machines and equipment and vision sensors and all of our scientific disciplines. And when you do that measurement, there's some degree of error associated with it. But we treat that measurement like it's 100% correct. Now, if we find that there's a difference or an issue that's about the same size as our measurement error, it's probably not a true issue. It's probably related to the error in our measurement. So when we're thinking about that and thinking about our benchmarking, we also want to set up our program to begin to monitor, because we don't have a lot of time. So if we're doing a measurement, let's also include setting up the monitoring program at the same time. So making a change. Most of the time in scientific industries, when you do a process improvement effort, there's a lot of changes that could be made. And the key there is to prioritize those changes. Right? What is going to bring you the highest value in the shortest period of time and the best return to your company? And prioritizing that is very important. Otherwise, if you get 10 lists of change and they're not prioritized, they may or may not happen. And then monitor. On a regular basis, you want to monitor these KPIs that you've defined. Now, the key is, in, in the age of automation and automatic data collection, you want to set up a simple program no need to boil the ocean. I work with a lot of customers and a lot of customers here on setting up KPIs and monitoring programs. So pick three to five KPIs that are at a higher level that cover a bigger area of scope. So it shouldn't be um, reduction in documentation time as much as it should be what is the area and the higher level KPI. And setting up those to monitor automatically. And then finally, what I think is a lot of times overlooked is how are you going to share that information? It's great that you gather it. It's great that we do really advanced analysis on it. But if we don't package it up in a way that people want to consume it, then it doesn't matter if we gather it anyways. So one thing that I was very naive about when I got out of school was the fact that I could do these really advanced models and just assume that everybody could understand that I was what I was doing. And I spend more time creating presentations and ways to present information so it's consumed. Um, do you give the same presentation to your colleagues and your scientists as you would give to your executive team? Typically, the answer is no, right? So you want to target your audience and prepare it for your audience. And it might require that you do a couple different dashboards with different levels of information for the right people. So this is a key process to improve business health. We've used it in a lot of ways. However, those are um, some enhancements I would make based on my experience. So I would say what is measured correctly improves. It's not just if you measure it, it's going to improve. You got to measure it. You got to go through the cycles correctly. You got to share the information correctly. And then you get the improvement on the other side. 
So we do have a, I want to share with you today the Biovia assessment and benchmarking program that we've created. And I've worked with some of our customers already to document KPIs, define KPIs, do these measurements. So we have the define stage and we typically agree to the scope and the KPIs. And then we do measurements through surveys or interviews, usually both, ideally but we're trying to keep it in a focused area. So when we do surveys, we may survey 20 people and we may do interviews with five individuals, really focusing on those higher level objectives. And then when we do the analysis, we wanna do benchmarking, qualitative and quantitative analysis. So we're pulling in the quantitative data that we've gathered, but we're also doing that mixed methods analysis with the qualitative information that we have. And then some of you may have seen the documents behind me. These are called collaborative value assessments, and they include the assessment there, the areas of improvement potentially, as well as suggested best practices and strategies. And we really focus on that because KPIs are only good enough if they show you where you are and what your KPIs are, but then what is the strategy that could potentially improve that KPI? So that's really important to focus on. This is the core components of the benchmarking program. I don't expect, again, for you to read this, but just to understand that we define the KPIs in different areas. We define the improvement strategies, the sub-strategies related to that improvement, and then what are the enabling best practices associated with. And as you might imagine, as we gather more and more data, this becomes such a rich source of information for scientific companies to be able to leverage this knowledge. Now we're doing this in all kinds of different areas. We're focusing on a lot of high impact strategies here and we're developing this in the value engineering team. So as you see these, they might relate to you if you're focusing on collaboration with your partners or you're focusing on different areas. This is what the value engineering team at Biovia is working on and we're defining these high impact strategies related to KPIs and related to best practices in the scientific industries. So what does benchmarking enable you to do? This is an example output that you could look at. For example, I have tech transfer cycle time, operational efficiency, batch rejection rates, and CPV cycle time. Very similar to what Jim just presented about CPV and focusing on that. If you can benchmark against other scientific companies within the database and see where your KPIs fall and then understand how much value would I get by improving to what an average would be, and that's where the bar's behind me, versus what is the benefit if I improve to the top 25% above average? And then you could see that you can prioritize where you're going to do your investments. So here on the example, manufacturing operational efficiency is gonna have the biggest return to us as a scientific company, so we're gonna prioritize that as the highest value and work on that area first. So I took the liberty of looking up your mission statements and value statements for many of the companies that are here attending science in the age of experience. And as you can see, there's a common theme, right? Patients, life, living, health, and healthcare, right? So we're focusing on this for our patients. It's our core values. It's the priorities that we're working towards. So if you want to provide that for your patients, we also have to be thinking about that in terms of our business, because we can only achieve those core values and visions for our companies if we make sure that our business is also fit in optimal health, doing preventative care by doing regular KPIs, right? And focusing on that. These two are uh, really tied together. So in general, I just wanna sum up, if you are using KPIs today, great work. Um, it's something that should be measured on a regular basis over time, and the Biovia Value Engineering Department has done a lot of this work working with our customers. So how does your business health measure up in terms of other scientific companies? Um, if you're doing that, great. If you have any questions or need any support, the Biovia Value Engineering team is here to support you and help you in sometimes defining these complex KPIs. Thank you.